Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son get together and talk about books and other media, fantasy, science fiction, any other nerdy things we feel like talking about. Today, it is a pleasure to have Zach with us again to give us his thoughts on a book I read a long time ago. He's read more recently, book four of the Dresden Files, Summer Night. This is a book blast, so in about five minutes, he's going to give his spoiler light reactions. You shouldn't watch this if you haven't read the first three books at least, though, mm. because he might reference things. I might reference things from the previous mm. books. We're like, you're paying attention to this one. Uh, you should have at least read what's before. But we're not going to ruin things from this one in case this is your teaser video to see if you should read Summer Night. Zach, what are your thoughts? I actually, I liked this one. It was a good continuation of previous things that had been going on in the Dresden Files. It still is deeply rooted in what a Dresden book is and this world this style, but it does introduce some new elements, some new characters that yes. I think were healthy for the series. There are things that we knew existed, but we get to see them better and we get to actually experience them more, especially a certain never place that may or may not be a thing in this series. Well, that is something I wanted to ask you specifically about. I mean, the series shifts to focus much more heavily into the realm of the Fae in this story. That worked for you? Is that what you're and saying? That you worked like those elements? very well. Knowing that there were other things out there was always something that was cool, whatever. But Harry was a little too rooted into his shtick and, and getting to see, oh, there is actually more here. And this is how it kind of interplays with itself and each other. Cool. I like this. And seeing the more magic world, as opposed to seeing magic in our world all the time, seeing mm -hmm. more Harry interacting with the magic world. And that one of the was things really good. One of the things that I like about it, and this really opened it up more, I think, is we're in both worlds very firmly in the Dresden Files. This showed it that much more. You've got this magical world. You've got the Fae, and it's almost overlaid. It's in the background. It's, it's in plain sight, but nobody can see it unless they know what they're looking at. So that was kind of cool. I mean, some of the characters were clearly human. Some mm -hmm. clearly were not. But they're still at coffee shops. They're still having a beer. <laughs> I will also say someone from Harry's past made an appearance in this book. Yeah. And I thought that was very interesting to see. And I'm excited to see that inevitably come up more and more. But it does seem like something that will probably be intermittent. I'm glad you went there because I want to know. What other future events are potentially foreshadowed here? You're predicting that character is going to be back. There's, oh, there'll sure. be more interplay. All right. Um, I don't know how much I can actually say without say it cryptically. Uh, spoiling things. It's cryptically. So people who know, they know. Uh, <laughs> other people could be knighted at times, and that's interesting. Okay. Certain oaths and promises, how they may need to get fulfilled in the future, uh, yeah. is kind of a looming thread just kind of waiting to be dangled and pulled like a puppet. There is an ongoing thing that happened at the end of the last book that we're going to see continuing to play out. And that's really going to, it's going to be a big driving factor for a couple books here, I think. Partially because I know, but partially because I think. <laughs> Any significant repercussion you think we can expect as a result of the ending of this book? Or is it done? That part of the story, it's just I mean, over. are there repercussions? Absolutely. I'd argue more the bigger thing that we see with the end of this book is an intentional lack of repercussion in that had things gone differently, there would have been really, really, really big repercussions. There is a certain lifting of restriction at the end of this book, technically, that is also really nice to see. And seeing someone with a little more rope to work with is going to be a good thing as well, I think. Yeah. All right. Final question for you. How does this book compare to the previous three? I mean, you've had opinions having moved through those first yeah. three. First one was okay. Second one was okay. Third one I kind of liked. This one I'd say was pretty on par with the third, maybe a little better. Okay. But it was pretty normal. It's pretty sane there. Okay. Well, there you go, people. If you want to know more about Summer Night, I do have a full 
deep review episode here on the channel. So if that's what you're looking for, go check that out. It's very comprehensive because I can't stop talking about things I love. This was just our teaser, our little book blast, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it so much that you've gone down and clicked the like button. You can still do it now. And we hope you subscribe to our channel so you see all the things Zach and I keep bringing out for your entertainment and fun. And if you're really having fun, check out how to join us on Patreon and get some extra benefits. Why not? We're good people. All right. Say goodbye, Zach. Goodbye, Zach. We'll talk to you next time.